Hello people of YouTube, it's Deepak here and welcome to DCS World 2.8.1 and Heat Blur Simulations F14B Tomcat Module. Welcome to Tutorial 7, Navigation. Today we're going to learn all about navigation in the F14 using the INS, using TACAN, using ADF and using Manual Mode. Uh, this is uh, functionality that is spread between the front and back seats. Of course, the pilot being the person who is executing manoeuvres and maintaining the aircraft on course, and the Rio in the back seat, for the most part, being the person setting the current destination and inputting coordinates in the event that uh, these need to be shuffled about. Now, uh, I'm going to pause and I'm going to bring up a little document because before we go any further, I should talk about the types of point that can be stored in the INS. The INS of the, of the F-14 is a fairly early one and has some limitations, uh, one of them being that it only stores three waypoints. Although in addition to these three waypoints, you also have additional point types that can be entered in the uh, mission editor as nav fix points uh, with special two-letter codes. Uh, and these would be home base. Now, home base will be automatically entered if your flight plan includes a waypoint that is of the type landing. However, if you would like to uh, place one manually, you can enter a nav point with the code HB for home base. You simply enter these characters in as the comment. Uh, we then have defend point. Uh, the defend point is code DP. This would normally be an area for you to defend, funnily enough, or in some cases it might be a concentration of friendly troops that you need to be wary of during your attack. Uh, below that we have fixed point. This would usually be a, a predefined INS fixed point that you could do that you could use for uh, taking a, an INS update, uh, and this has the code FP. Below that we have hostile area. This would normally be a concentration of enemy troops or something like a SAM site or whatever that you should stay away from. Uh, this has the code HA. Surface target would normally be your intended air to ground target if you are doing a ground attack mission. Surface target has the code ST. And then you have your initial point, IP. This is usually the point from which you will attack your surface target and it has the code IP, unsurprisingly. Now take note of these symbols. These are the symbols that you will see on the TID if you're in the back seat. Uh, everyone is probably familiar with the waypoint symbols because they're quite common. Uh, the other types though, uh, many missions don't have these entered. Now you, you can have these entered in the mission editor, as I said, using the two digit codes and, uh, and the nav point functionality. However, like I said, often that's not the case. You then also have the ability to get Jester to enter them for you or you can manually enter them if you jump into the back seat. And lastly, you also have the ability to create markers on the F-10 map, and you can ask Jester to enter those markers as either waypoints or these various different types of reference point. So these are all the points that you can have in the aircraft. Let's now jump back into the sim and uh, take a little look in the back seat as to what these might look like. And I don't really know what's going on there. That was weird. Uh, let's jump into the back seat, and if we look at the TID here, actually I'm going to bump out the range a little, we can see most of these symbol types. So you can see waypoints 1, 2, 3, you can see my initial point, you can see my surface target, you can see a hostile area here, you can see a, what was this one called again, a defend point, so that's concentration of friendly troops. If I move this to ground stabilised and bump out the range, there is the symbol for home base as well. Uh, and I, I entered waypoints 1, 2, and 3, and the home base just as part of the normal flight plan. Those other ones were nav points. Now, if I open up the kneeboard, very helpfully in the F-14, these are all entered into the kneeboard for us. So we can see our waypoints, and we can see our different reference points here. If you have additional waypoints that were entered in the mission editor, they won't be in the INS, because INS can only have points 1 to 3, but they will be noted on the kneeboard. So the nice thing here is, let's say for example I've flown to waypoint 1 and then waypoint 2 and I'm now inbound waypoint 3, at that point I effectively don't need waypoints 1 or 2 anymore. So what we can do is we can ask Jester to reposition these points for us. If I jump back into the front seat just now, and let's set my HSD into TID repeater so I can see everything that he sees. Let's press uh, menu and menu again. 
Let's go into Navigation Utility, and we're going to choose Restore Mission Steer Point. We then choose the waypoint we want to replace. I'm going to replace waypoint 1, and I'm going to replace it with the more steer points, and then waypoint 4. Roger. So you're now going to hear a bunch of clicking from Jester as he goes ahead and starts inputting uh, the new details for waypoint 1. We can even see him typing in the numbers as he goes. And note that the, the waypoint 1 symbol shifts as he does the latitude, and now the longitude. And there it is, it's now in position. So he has now replaced uh, waypoint 1 with waypoint 4. Uh, now, something to note is that does not update the kneeboard. So the kneeboard is only correct as of when we took off. Um, so we need to keep our own notes about which ones we've shuffled about. So uh, let's do let's do waypoint two now. Let's replace waypoint two with waypoint five. But this time we're going to do it ourselves. So let's jump into the back seat. Uh, we use the TID and the CAP in order to do this. You want to make sure your CAP is in tactical data. You want to select the waypoint that you're going to replace, and you'll see that it's then highlighted. We're going to press clear, and we're going to open our kneeboard, and then we're going to press lat to enter the latitude. We're going to press uh, the N button for northing, and we're entering 3, 3, 1, 3, 1. That's all confirmed at the top of the screen, which we can actually barely see right now. Let me see if I can fix that. There we go, 33131, we can now press enter, then we're going to press long, we're going to press E for easting, and we're going to enter 3, 8, 2, 7, uh, I got lost, no it was 38566, six. okay, let's hit clear, long, easting, 3, 8, uh, 5, six six press enter and uh, we're going to want our altitude now so we're going to press alt and this one is positive two five three five so two five three five i find this keypad really hard to use and press enter and that's us we've now updated waypoint two and you can see straight away it's jumped to this new location so that's how you do all of that um, so yeah, you only have three waypoints in the system at any given time, but you do have the free ability to swap them back and forth. Another cool thing that we could do, let's say we want to reposition waypoint number three, but I want to do it by giving uh, Jester a location on the map. Let's go ahead and choose a uh, mark label. I'm going to put down a mark label, and I'm going to call it Deepak uh, Waypoint 3. Uh, it's good to give it a name, especially if you're in multiplayer, so then people know what this marker is for, because other people can see your points. Uh, and now if I jump in the front seat, I'm going to go Menu, Menu, Navigation Utility, Steer Point from Map, I want to replace Waypoint 3, and I want to replace it with Deep Hack Waypoint 3, created 21 seconds ago. Jester will now dutifully move Waypoint 3 for us to the location that I entered on the F10 map. There we go. Perfect. And he'll even enter the altitude for us. And that's all set. Excellent. So, that is how you do that. Uh, so that's how you maintain those points. I'm going to put my HSD back into nav mode, and now we're going to quickly cover the instruments that the pilot has for following these waypoints. So uh, we have the VDI up above here. That's the vertical display indicator. The most important thing on here is the heading tape. This heading tape has a triangle on the bottom, and that's always telling you how to get to your currently selected waypoint. So... Um, if we take a little look at the steering command push buttons down here, you'll see that we have modes for TACAN, destination, which means using the INS, uh, AWL, which is the, the automatic landing system of the carrier, VEC, which is points given to us over the data link, and we have manual mode. Today, we'll only be covering TACAN, destination, and manual mode. Uh, the AWL, S, and the data link I'll cover in a different video later. So, with the, the system set into destination, uh, we then have heading information to the currently selected waypoint. 
Now, on the HSD, which is this display below, that's the horizontal situation display, we have a caret showing us the direction to the currently selected waypoint, along with a, a line and an arrow. We have the lubber line, which is these two diamonds, showing us the direction our nose is pointed and the direction our tail is pointed at the current time. And then we have this indicator here, which is the ADF pointer. I'll cover that later. We then have the master mode that we're currently in. We're currently in destination mode. And we then have what we currently have selected as the destination. If I remember correctly, this is indicating waypoint one, I think. I'm not 100% sure. But what we can do is if we press menu, menu, and again, go to navigation utility, we want to select a destination steer point. So we're going to tell Jester, um, take us to the initial point. Roger that. Switching to initial point. And now you'll see that we're inbound IP. I-N-I-P. Uh, now, if we were in the back seat, the way we would select the current destination is using this rotary here. Uh, so whichever position this rotary is in is our currently selected waypoint. So I've now selected waypoint 2. Let's jump back into the front seat. And yeah, you can see inbound 2 displayed on the HSD. So we now know where we're going. Um, so yeah, normally if you're in the front seat, you're just going to tell Jester what to do. Set destination. Uh, and actually, let's go waypoint 3. Switching to steer point 3. And there you go. Inbound 3. And we have new heading information displayed on there. And the last instrument that the pilot has for navigation is the BDHI, or the Bearing Distance Heading Indicator. That's this indicator here. It's capable of displaying information from TACAN or from the ADF. The TACAN needle is this uh, needle with the curved pointer that's currently spinning. Whenever the TACAN is not tuned, it just spins. And then this more pointy pointer <laughs> is the ADF. And when it doesn't display a signal, it parks in the three o'clock position, just like this. So currently this indicator is completely dead. So how do we tune our TACAN? We can either ask Jester nicely to do it for us, or if we look on our left console here, we have our TACAN controls here on this part of the panel. And you also want to take note of the TACAN command position. It can be in pilot, or NFO, which is the back seat. We're going to make sure it's in pilot, and I'm going to select 48, and this is for Yankee or X ray. We're going to have X ray. We're going to make sure the, the TACAN is in transmit and receive, and it's then ready to use. Now, if I look up here, I can see that the pointer is now pointing towards that station, and it's even indicating a range. It currently says just under 35 nautical miles. Also, if I was to put my steering command into TACAN mode, I would then have a pointer showing me the direction to the TACAN. So we've got some new indications here. Uh, this triangle is the TACAN 2, or the TACAN towards indicator. This plus is the uh, TACAN from, if we were flying away. And then we even have the option of setting a course. Uh, and if we set the course that we want to fly to or from the station, we then get deviation lines as standard. So that's how all of that works. I'm going to put my system back into destination mode, though. Uh, okay, now the ADF. Now, the ADF is only functional from the back seat. Uh, the front seat uh, UHF radio does have an ADF option, but it's non-functional in the front seat. But if we jump to the back seat, and let's take a little look at the left-hand console here, this radio here, our, uh, our VHF UHF radio, has the ability to tune ADF stations. Now I happen to know that I have an ADF station nearby on 114 megahertz. So what I'm going to do first is on this outer ring, the inner ring is for changing presets. The outer ring here changes modes. I can switch this into manual mode and then I can tune using the buttons underneath the display. I'm going to tune 114 and it's currently in transmit and receive. So in that mode, I should, I think, hear the Morse code. There we go. So I'm hearing the Morse code of an ADF station. Let's rotate the mode out of transmit and receive and into DF for direction finder. And in direction finder mode, this little skinny pointer is now pointing towards the ADF station. Now for ADF stations, we don't get any range indications, but we do get an indication towards where that station is. And that station is a nearby airfield, so that'd be quite handy. So you can see that I can have 
a TACAN and an ADF programmed at the same time, and I can be navigating via the INS. So I have quite a few uh, different um, navigation sources and things that I can reference all at the same time. Okay, and then the last main mode that we have is manual. Manual mode is very, very basic, and all it does is allow us to fly a preset heading. So in manual mode, I have this uh, rotary here, HSD selected heading. I can move this until I have the heading selected that I want. Um, so let's say that I wanted to fly 100. I've now set that, and on my VID, I also have a, uh, a steering queue. Uh, and I believe in cruise mode, that's also repeated on the HUD. No, that's not on the HUD. Uh, oh, because I'm in air-to-air -air mode. Let's go to cruise mode. There we go. Um, no, it's not repeated in cruise mode, actually. So, there you go. All the standard modes in which you can navigate in the F-14B. You've got the use of the INS, you have TACAN, you have ADF, and you have the manual heading mode. I hope that you all enjoyed that. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like, and comment. Uh, you also have the option of joining Deep Hack's ground crew if you'd like to further support the channel. Thank you very much to those who've already done so. Frantic Stone, Mr. Yeti, Griff Nizzle, Chandro Hedgewald, J.R. Walker, Mangash, Channel Wright, Storm Kimbari, Byron Farrow, Leo Netzel, Harish Rajan, Pink Floyd, and Bread. Thank you very much for your support, everybody, and I'll see you all next time.